Right. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Greetings from the SADC Center for Distance Education. SADC Center for Distance Education based at Botswana Open University in Khabarone, Botswana. My name is Mother Lady Selezo, and I'll be directing this morning's proceedings. Um, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, the SADC Center for Distance Ed Education is hosting none other than Image Africa team. We will be hosting the Image Africa team. And um, before we go any further, may I inform colleagues that this meeting is being recorded. And by attending this meeting, by at your attending this virtual meeting, you are simply also, you know, agreeing to the recording of this meeting. You are consenting to the recording of this meeting. I just wanted us to pass um, through this one, colleagues. And um, like I said, I'll be directing this morning's proceedings. <clears throat> and um, it's now a minute after 10 o'clock. So we in Botswana colleagues are a nation in mourning. I, I, I think colleagues would already be in the know that during the Easter holidays, uh, a bus carrying members of the Zion Christian Church members to Moria, their headquarters in South Africa, had an accident in Limpopo. And um, out of the 46 people who were in the bus, only an eight-year-old girl survived the accident. The rest perished. May their souls rest in peace. And at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm just going to invite us to a silent prayer, all of us, because at this meeting, we are a people from different religious denominations. And as we pray, as we do our silent prayer, let's keep in, my, in our minds, let's have in our prayers, the families of the 45 members of the Zion Christian Church who perished in Limpopo, South Africa, over the Easter holidays. May we do our silent prayer, colleagues. Thank you, colleagues, and may their soul rest in peace. Um, like I said earlier on, this morning I'll be right directing proceedings where SADC CDE is hosting Image Africa team. I would now wish to make uh, a brief introduction to uh, those that will be participating in today's program, colleagues. And um, I know that I will not be able to introduce everybody present at this virtual meeting, but, but it will be nice to acknowledge and appreciate those that are present here and those that will be participating in uh, today's um, program. I'll first of all start by introducing Dr. Frisin Kaniwa, who is head of department at um in the School of Social Science School of Science and Technology at Botswana Open University. Dr. Kaniwa, if you can just um show your face so that there he is. Does just give us a wave, Dr. K. That's Dr. Frisin Kaniwa. Um He's head of department in the School of Science and Technology at Botswana Open University. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaniwa. Um, we had requested that Ms. Uno Patumelezo from the Office of Publishing and Services do the vote of thanks and invitation to the next session for us. Unfortunately, she had an emergency and she had to proceed on leave. But, you know, in ODL, in open and distance learning, we always have soldiers waiting for, for, for the call. You know, when you are a soldier, you are on call 24-7. So I have a soldier who will stand in for Miss Uno Patumelezo, and that is none other than Dr. Leko Pangitladi, who is HOD for school of, in the School of Education, Head of Department for Science and Technology Department. Dr. T, if you can just show your face, please. Yeah, there, there I am. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, you see, he has a plastic bag and some coffee station behind him. That's Dr. Tladi, who will be the, doing the vote of thanks and inviting us to the next seminar session. Thank you, Dr. T. And you'll be you. um, 
doing it. He's, he's also at Botswana Open University. And now I have a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce you to the team, the image team, the people that we are here for, the people who will be leading and guiding and facilitating us at this morning's um, conversation webinar series. And um, I'm just going to, I'm not sure if they're all here, but I'll just give the name and the jurisdiction in the image team. And then they can just open their cameras for us to, to see and appreciate them. Um, I'll start with Mr. Tony Carr. You know, Tony and I, or maybe the team and I met way back in, in um, where did we meet Tony? In Rwanda, yes. We met in Rwanda in during the e-learning Africa conference, and this is an amazing team, colleagues. So I'm glad and I'm happy that we have them. We we are hosting them as the SADC Center for Distance Education. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Carr is the Image Africa convener. Mr. Carr, yes, that's Tony. <laughs> if we can give us a wave, Tony. There, thank you. <laughs> and then Dr. Alice Balo. Zambodla, she's the Image Africa Research Coordinator. Ali, Sister Ali, she's also a pastor. I, I'm not sure if, if Ali has joined. But, Alice um, is not here today. She's not uh, here today. She is a little bit ill and she's just recovering from that. Okay. Um, our colleague Mohammed Ahmed also will not be able to join us today, but with us, we will have Dr. Relitza Debra and Irene Maweo. Irene and 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 Debbie. Irene, if you can share your face, I saw Irene there. Hi, Irene. Irene is the Image Africa online facilitator and event organizer. That's Irene. And then Dr. Debra Raliza is the Image Africa online facilitator. Debbie, if you can just that's the Image Africa team. Tonika. Um, Dr. Debbie Raliza and um, Irene Mawe, these are the colleagues that will be with us driving this morning's um, workshop. And I want to say we are breaking from the norm where we are used to people coming here to talk to us about their research findings, about their challenges. This morning, we are going to have Image Africa facilitating a two-hour workshop for us on the emergent and generative artificial intelligence in African, in higher education. And then they will unfold as, as, as presented in the abstract that has been shared with all of us here. So I'm just going to hand over to you, Tony, Tony. to do as you wish with us. And um, you, will, you will only do that after the welcome remarks by Dr. Frisin Kaniya. So Dr. Kaniwa, the floor is now yours to welcome the, the friends and colleagues and facilitators for us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Director of Ceremonies. Uh, good morning, colleagues, distinguished guests, and all other guests here present. I'm also just going to say all protocol observed. I would like to extend a special welcome to our uh, acting vice chancellor. I'm not sure if she's with us and the members of the executive management team, the EMT, and as well to the Image Africa team, whose presence here today honors us all. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to see the staff from Bo here, Botswana Open Invest, as well as the distinguished guests from institutions throughout Africa and possibly beyond gathered here, uh, both, uh, in fact, it's just online, I, I understand. And it is my honor to welcome you all to this exciting webinar, the conversation webinar, hosted by Southern African Development Community Center for Distance Education, SADAC CDE, in collaboration with the Image Africa team to talk about the future of open and distance e-learning or DEL in the 21st century with a specific focus on the challenges and opportunities presented by generative artificial intelligence, AI. Uh, I think you agree, colleagues, that it was only a matter of time before we had this conversation. And now that time has come. Some say AI is the most significant development for humankind since the dawn of history. 
AI has continued to make headlines across the world since the launch of uh, ChatGPT by OpenAI in November 2022. So this rapid advancement of AI, particularly the recent emergence of these powerful generative AI tools, presents both uh, opportunities as well as challenges for higher education in Africa and globally. And as a university dedicated to ODL, we at Bo have a special interest really in and the responsibility in grappling with how these technologies of AI can be leveraged to expand access to quality education whilst navigating the risks they may pose to the academic integrity and the student lecturer slash tutor relationship. So I'm excited that we'll be exploring these critical issues today in an interactive workshop with the uh, Image Africa team, a network that has been on the forefront of driving dialogue and professional development around educational technology in African higher education. The Image Africa team brings a wealth of expertise and a thoughtful approach to facilitating action-oriented discussions. So today's agenda covers some of the key considerations around generative artificial intelligence, AI. That is our hopes and fears and how it is already being used by educators and students and what we can and should do to influence its direction. So I would want to thank uh, again, the Image Africa team uh, and their facilitators, Tonika, Dr. Ralitha, Debra, Irene Maweu, and in absentia, Dr. Mohamed Ahmad and Dr. Alice Zambodla. And to all of you who are participating today, I look forward to a stimulation, stimulating and productive work, workshop. Uh, thank you, Director of Ceremonies. And a big thank you to you too, Dr. Kaniwa. Ladies and gentlemen, may I request that we unmute our microphones and give Dr. Kaniwa a big round of applause. I did request that we should unmute our microphones. And remember, I can see who has muted and who has not muted. And by virtue of being the chair, I can even request Francis Boala <laughs> to 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 uh, unmute and and give Dr. Kanua a round of applause. Colleagues, may I request that we all unmute our microphones and be give Dr. Kanua a, a round of applause for the very very insightful welcome that he just gave to us. <laughs> yes, can we now give him a round of applause, please? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I see they now just want to uh, uh, re remove everything from the room. Yeah, thank you so much, colleagues, for, for the round of applause. Thank you so much, Rekaniwa, for your very insightful ways. Um, word of welcome. You did touch on the, the benefits and the need of artificial um, intelligence, especially to ODL, uh, how we need to appreciate the interactive workshop, you know, by Image Africa. Like we said, this is one in a million. You know, half the time we always have people coming here to facilitate where the, the talk and listen kind of presentation. But we are happy that this time around we will be having a workshop. And uh, we hope that at the end of this workshop, colleagues would have gotten um, a leaf or two from the presentation. And um, colleagues, may I request that um, we also introduce ourselves through the, the chat platform. If you can just tell us your name, your country, and your institution so that you can also add you, you know, to the list of the friends of the SADC Center for Distance Education. And this will allow us in future, you know, to share um, other information as may be necessary with ourselves, right? With the, the, the very warm welcome remarks from Mr. Kani, Dr. Kaniwa, I'm now going to um, allow the, the, the image team, I'm not going to introduce them now because I have introduced them at the start of the, the, the meeting, at the start of the program. I'm just going to allow them in so that we have 
a, a successive flow of the presentation as they will be doing the workshop. So I'm going to be handing over to you, Irene, Debbie, and Tony to take us through this morning's workshop. Over to you, colleagues, and have a good afternoon. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaniwa. Thank you so much, Professor Mabaledi. Um, it's a great privilege and honor to be here and to be invited to lead one of your events because I know you have um, been doing massive work over several years to grow this network and to grow the capacity of the network. Um, so just before getting going, just a couple of hints. Um, one of them is that if you are here with a Zoom identity, which either is cryptic and just mentions your initials like AZ, or mentions your job title, we are here across many different organizations. So your job title in your university does not tell people in other places who you are. So it would be a wonderful if you could actually just put your name into your Zoom um, profile here so we can see who you are. And if you have your, your name, which is like um, Samsung Galaxy S3, um, then also please change it. <laughs> so we know there's a human being here, not just a phone or mobile device. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, and also my colleague, um, Ralitsa is actually Ralitsa first name, Debra surname. Um, even though in many countries in West Africa, the names are, are actually reversed when people tell you their names. Okay, so here we go. Um, let me just share this with you, our little presentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something different. As uh, Professor Mabaledi said, we're going to do something which is a lot more interactive, a lot more conversational than you often get in these kinds of seminars. So let's see how that goes. Um, and we can build things as we move. Our agenda today is we're going to look at um, arriving here, um, Together, all of us, a little bit about Emerge Africa. We're going to look at the hopes and fears about generative AI. We're going to talk about generative AI together and Odell. We're going to invite you to the African Horizons, AI Horizons online festival planned for late October, and also to join us in thinking about making a funding bid for research on generative AI in African higher education, and then we're going to close. So that's our process through the event. If we have time somewhere in the middle, uh, we might just have a small stretch break because it, I think it is an infringement of human rights to expect people to sit online in a meeting for two hours at a stretch. And I know in all our organizations, we do this all the time, but let's see if we can do something different. And as we go, what we're trying to do is to use different modes of participation and engagement. Um, for some people here, this will be very familiar. For others, this will be an interesting experiment. But what we want to do in all of our events is to have as much participation, as much engagement, as much participant voice as we can possibly get moving. Okay, so we have a little bit of a check-in activity here. And for this, I'm going to hand over to Ralitza to introduce the activity. All right, so welcome everybody and great to have you all here. We are going to do a very, very quick exercise and what we call waterfall. And with the waterfall, we are going to have a quick chat and once we ask you to send your answers before you do so. So um, on the uh, next slide, we are quickly going to see our water for prompts, which is how I feel now is, how I feel now is, 
So we are going to do a little bit of countdown. And three. Just wait, two. please. Please wait. Let's give people a chance to actually get their answer into the text box first. Okay. <laughs> so I know you're really right. eager. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we, we, we are waiting for you to um, share your thought about how you feel now. So we start with the first question, which is the first prompt about how I feel now is, how I feel now is, right? So <laughs> three, uh, two, one, go. <laughs> send your answers. Okay, <laughs> Ruth, it feels great. Awesome. Um, Just send your answers. They can be short, like two yes. words, three words. It's fine. Yes. How do you feel? <laughs> how are you? This is the this is how we check in. How are you? Okay, so Sandile says mesmerized, does love water. Nice. Kelly says fine. Tepi so happy. Le I feel good. Nice. Happy, good, fine. Great. So uh, Maria says uh, a little tired, but happy to be here. Great. So a lot of happiness, happiness, more happiness. So we have friends is refreshed. And Akizo says thirsty, and please grab some water. <laughs> and then Patsy says great and very interested, great. And Fideli says great. So we have a lot of happiness, great. And to those of us who are thirsty, please hydrate. <laughs> Although we are online, we encourage you to be hydrated. Nice. So any more answers, please um, share. Let's wait for a few more, and then we can move on to our next one. All right. Ah. So. <laughs> nice. So, but uh, Francis says that expectant, yes. And Margaret says hopeful, indeed. So much hope with AI. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, we have uh, more eager and curious. Naomi says happy. More happiness. <laughs> nice. So, thank you so much. Please keep your feedback coming. And Rebona says great. So, um, we can see that we have a lot of happiness, great, hopeful, and all of us were expectant. We'll see a lot as we go through um, today's session. So, um, wow. Mont so, um, Montabem. Montabem. <laughs> and you, uh, can you tell us what that means? <laughs> it means very good. I'm very good. Oh, that's nice. Very good. More it's good Portuguese. Time. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. So we've learned some Portuguese today. That's beautiful. You know, so much to learn online. Exciting, really exciting. All right. So uh, more goodness coming through. Yes. Thank you so much, Sarah Lorraine. We appreciate that. And thank you for all the lovely and lovely, wonderful feedback. And so we are going to take the next prompt, which is uh, my work. In distant education is my work in distant education is um all right so margaret says my work in distant education is an adventure yes so much adventure in distance education nice <laughs> thanks for sharing that so let's hear fences the uh, capacity building wonderful um Ruth says interesting maria yemi says so challenging and then Irene said, sharing knowledge through online facilitation. Good. And Machoso says, good. And Sancile says, uh, Sindile says, all about enhancing access to higher education. Nice. Philly says, uh, technological. Yes. Technology helps us connect in different locations. Isn't that wonderful? We all connecting from different regions. Beautiful. So, um, Tepeso says human resource. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And more Portuguese coming through. <laughs> this appeared com mutos aprendizados. I've tried my Portuguese today. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Fidelis, um, upskilling. Thank you for sharing that. So our Portuguese friends, you can tell us in, in English if you can what that means as well. So everyone will understand. 
All right. So first he says that focuses on training and it's very enjoyable. Beautiful. And then Naomi says informative, always learning something new. Nice. So today we're going to learn a few more and share a few more from course colleagues here. Thank you, Naomi, for that. And then Maneo says rewarding. Yes, indeed. Um, distance education can be rewarding as well. Thank you so much, dear colleagues, um, for sharing all this lovely, lovely, lovely and wonderful feedback. And from all walks of life, we thank you so much for sharing that. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Tony to take us through the next session. Thank you, Tony. I thank you, Ralitza. Thank you very much. Okay. So what we're going to do now is just say a little bit about Emerge Africa, about what we are, what we do, and I'm going to hand over to Irene for this. And uh, thank you, Tony and and Ralitza. Um, uh, that was great energy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so my name is Irene. I sit in Kenya, um, and that is the diversity we have in Emerge Africa, which is an online professional development network. And I, I think. We like poking the bear. We we like trying out new things. We like research. We like uh, sharing the knowledge. We we also like sharing things that we find out there. Uh, calling people together um, to say, "Hey, come come join us." We have a very big network uh, that cuts across a lot of people. These are just a few of the of the network members who are there from universities and vocational educators. We have e-learning support staff and librarians too. We have educational technology researchers and other kind of researchers. We have trainers and facilitators. We have education uh, sector managers and much more uh, that are within our network. The, the most interesting thing is that we are very, uh, uh, we are both represented by uh, the main genders, that is uh, male and female. I know nowadays we have more genders, but that's a story for another day, which probably Image Africa can have. Um, <laughs> so this is the most interesting thing. We sit in different countries. So um, Tony, Alice, uh, Nicola, Jacob, and Pat sit in South Africa. Gabriel is in Zambia. Jerome sits in Nigeria in, in the University of Jos. Uh, I sit in Kenya, as I've said, Ralisa is in Ghana, and that is, and Mohammed is from Egypt. So you can see the, the diversity that we have in our group, how we bring the different cultures from different countries to blend together. We like joining uh, different organizations and in conferences, uh, for example, the digital, uh, which, will, which is usually organized, um, from, from Durban, so we joined that, and uh, you can see Alice is the one at the end. We have Ralitza at the middle, and we have uh, Dr. Karen from the University of Eswatini on this side that she's facing that way, but she, they were the panelists there, and we we bring our knowledge. We, we like discussing things. We like uh, bringing uh, those things. As I said, we poke the bear, so we try out hybrid sessions, which are really crazy to, to, to organize especially with audio and connectivity and all that kind of thing. But we still try it. And we also try new things like dance and movement in learning. So that is some of the things that we brought in the last uh, um, uh, conference that we went to and much more, not just that only. So as you can see, we, we do quite a number of things. We, are, we have, uh, last year we had 27 online events, but we usually have many more than that. Um, we we had 850 participants. Uh, some of the these participants don't miss um, our events. So we have people who come to all our events uh, from 54 countries and 25 of them were from Africa. So you can see like half are from outside Africa. So we are we reach out to a lot of people uh, across the divide. One of the things that I would like to mention is that we have moved on to the Arab world and we are really um, big in the Arab world at the moment. So with um, Dr. Mohammed leading that, that um, part of the world, but we also join um, 
I like sharpening my Arabic, so um, I join some of the sessions. But thank you to AI. There's always uh, a way of understanding what is going on in those sessions. So this is, it's hard to speak about Emerge Africa in two minutes, three minutes, because what we do is much more than that. So this is a word cloud of a few things or some of the things that we do, I think this was done by Tony. So Tony, over to you as we go on to the next uh, part. Thank you, everyone. Irene, thank you very much for taking us through what Emerge Africa is and does. Yeah, this Wordle um, basically came out of our events, I think about two years ago. Um, and you can see the range of interests and concerns that were reflected in the topics of our events. And of course, those, that obviously changes a bit from year to year. Um, Emerge Africa is about to go through some interesting times. And the interesting times are because our funding for the project um, is about to end. So we're going to stop being a funded project at least for a while. And we have to figure out ways to take the work forward. So we're seeking funding for Emerge Africa. So if you have any leads potential funding for such a network, talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. We're also considering ways of radically reinventing the network um, in order to realign in different ways. And we are looking at different kinds of strategic activities that allow us to grow the professional development work and grow the profession and to generate some income and to keep um, parts of the band together. <laughs> um, so one of the things we'll be talking with you about later on today is about a festival on generative AI in African higher education, which is one of our projects to continue the work of Emerge Africa. Okay, um, I don't know, has our colleague, um, Gabriel arrived in the room. If you are here, Gabriel, please um, just open your mic and say hi. No, not here yet. Not yet. Okay. So um, the next item on our agenda is about the hopes and fears that we are bringing to the conversation about generative AI. And I would like to ask, perhaps, um, Ralitza, would you be able to um, lead in this part of the program? All right. Um, thank you so much, Tony. Okay, Ralitza, uh, I'll do the next slide, then hand over to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, I think there's a question that we haven't answered, which is, what is generative AI? And I thought the best way to get a good answer about generative AI is to ask generative AI about itself. There is a system called Pi, P-I dot AI, which is actually quite fascinating in that it's based on a different large language model from ChatGPT and any of the others around. And it's designed in order to have a warm, human-like conversation with you. So I asked Pi, do you consider yourself to be an example of generative AI? And Pi said, yes, you can definitely consider me as a form of generative AI. And here it is. My responses are based on the input I receive, as well as the data I've been trained on. My responses are not predetermined or pre-programmed, but generated in real time based on the context of the conversation. I'm creating something new with every interaction based on the information I have in my database, based on also what I'm hearing from you. And Pi is also nice because it has live access to the web. So this is an example of a generative AI, AI talking about itself and why it is generative AI. So let's move on to talking about hopes and fears, dear colleagues. Okay, so, Relitza, tell us what to do, please. Okay, so um, we are going to be uh, joining Slido here. 
to share what our, our hopes for the use of generative AI in African ODL is. And we'll also share the, the link in the chat as well. Then you can also connect. So uh, we will be harvesting your feedback right here on the screen so that we can all um, hear um, your thoughts of what your hopes for the use of generative AI is. And yeah, so please click on the link in the text chat or you can join using the code that we've shared on the screen or in the text chat, please. And let us hear your feedback. Or you can use the QR code if you're taking part from a phone or mobile yes. device. Welcome, Manio. Good to have you here. <laughs> right. So let's see if you've all found your way into the Slido. Okay. Let's give you a minute or two to get in and start adding your answers. Right, so we have some answers coming through. Use it to add value. Right, so let's wait for a few more. Let's... Okay, so we can see participant typing. That's nice. For this one, probably not long answers. Just a couple of words would be good about your hopes. And you can give multiple answers, not just one. So you don't have to write a whole paragraph. Let's make this easy. I can see that there's a kind of reluctance to actually put in your answers and you feel like you have to get them absolutely right. Don't worry about that. We don't know who anybody here is. This is all completely anonymous. Just say what you think. Great. All right. So thank you for popping in some answers. So we see that um, a host for the use of generative AI in African ODL is to enhance um, our learning process and um, ethical considerations as well as sex it's its value and good i think it can be useful we also have other saying uh, we can use it to add value and also grow the odl and also escalate research yes and then better access to education right so we have more people typing. Uh, let's hear um, some more feedback. These are all very interesting ways that um, we can use uh, generative AI. In... Okay. So we have um, a few more here. So we have um, handle routine free. <laughs> Um, application generated lazy handle. Then we have knowledge reading original. So a few words, okay. So um, we also have some feedback actually coming coming through the text uh, chat as well. Um, okay, she's basically Makika is basically sharing with her where she's coming from with us. Thank you, Makika, you're welcome. 
And then Wiseman says for research and innovation, you can use generative AI for research and innovations. Thank you for that. Um, we have uh, Rathavide saying efficient, reliable, helps one to be adaptive and be problem solvers in a fast uh, changing world. Thank you for that. And you're also welcome to share directly in the Slido. And um, yeah, so uh, Maria Yeman says I support postgraduate students. Thank you for sharing that as well. We appreciate your feedback. And we have a uh, um, Jenny passing continuous enhancement of modern technologies. Um, thank you for that. So I'm going back into the slider to see what feedback we have there as well. So we have um getting work done more efficiently as well. And we still have uh, keywords like free, which means it's uh, free and also accessible in some situations. So we have, of course, um, thank you for loading the feedback into the Slido. We have um, a few more people typing. We also have for teaching, support, help, personalized learning, we also have it for reliable, it helps and original, it provides energy, uh, materials, assessments, and um, another phrase saying changing. So um, changing the work we do. Thank you, Alitza. All We've right. got so much happening here, so many yes. interesting words. Yes. And I'm kind of, you know, thinking where yes. does the the idea of where does breeding come in i'm just like basically what um I'm, I'm i'm so puzzled by the word breeding and what the word breeding means here so can if somebody who said that wants to just take the mic and just tell us why breeding is a benefit of or hope for generative ai <laughs> can you tell us <laughs> three two one no okay fine let's move um, and let's move to the next one. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. And the next one is about your fears about the use of generative AI. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to you, Ralitza. All right. So thank you, Tony, for that. So here we are. We're looking at your fears about the use of generative AI in African ODL. We've looked at how we could use it, and now we want to look at our, our fears about that. So let's uh, give it a couple of minutes and please share your thoughts with us about your fears um, regarding the use of generative AI. Yeah, I can see a lot of people typing. Yeah, so we have plagiarism. So on Slido, we have plagiarism, ethical challenges. Okay, laziness. <laughs> All right. So in the text chat, we have... Um, um, Portia saying over reliance on AI and failing to learn in the and failing to learn in the process. Then Maria says unethical use in the text chat. So back to the slido, we have um, job losses, bakery, um, no more reading. <laughs> so um, a lot and lots of challenges here with regards to. Um, education. So learning gap, um, cultural biases, um, accessibility. All right, so we have all right, a few more coming in. Academic dishonesty, almost dishonesty. And yeah, so let's hear a few more. Inability to think through things. Indeed, an ability to think through things. Thank you for sharing that. And great, uh, we have um, Naomi also sharing again about uh, plagiarism in the text chat. Frida says copyright. And Professor Karin, great to have you here. So she says bias and discrimination in the text chat. And Nokutola says dependence and technical assistance and lack of critical thinking. Then uh, we have breaks, 
saying, I hope to use generative AI to facilitate learning research, check plagiarism, and do collaborative work. All right, thank you for that. And then Prof. Karen says, uh, possible language loss. Thank you for sharing that. So back to the Slido. We have um, uh, still a lot of um, academic dishonesty, discrimination. Um, we have a uh, dependence on AI. And yeah, so, so far, plagiarism is one of the key things standing out in this case. And it's all about challenges around ethical and ethical use of AI and the fact that people might tend to be ignorant and we have some feedback to ignorant graduates indeed. And <laughs> <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's, uh, thank you for that. Yeah, it's clear what's coming up here. The main issue that people see is around um, plagiarism, but there are also issues yeah. around um, how good this AI really is and whether the AI is going to leave the students reliant on subcontracting their thinking to AI and not learning how to think and learn themselves. Um, yeah, so there's certainly, certainly a question there. Are we going to, the things we want for our students, will they get? I'm thinking about websites that I've seen with AI tools, which basically are set up to write essays for you to write essays for you and um, how some of them will boast that we produce essays that are undetectable by AI detectors. And they have, they're basically going, we want to support education, but then you can look at the comments by their customers. And there's one student who says, um, I am very happy with this service. I haven't had to write an essay for the last four months. <laughs> and you think, no, this is not okay. This kind of thing is definitely not okay. And of course, you have the issue around cultural bias here that the AI technologies are developed in the global north. They do not take account of what happens in places like Africa. Um, and there is a whole question around how do we bring the kinds of um, cultures and ways of being that people are experiencing throughout different regions of Africa into this new space. Okay. So the next section is going to basically be, where are we? What can we do? But before we go there, what I want to propose is that we have a short screen break of two minutes where we can get our faces away from the screen and we can even move around a little bit. And we'll be back with you in two minutes time, dear colleagues. Okay, colleagues, let's get going again. Um, I muted myself there for a second. Okay, I see a comment in the chat from Portia about a system called Athor, basically AI plus author, I guess. Um, and I think Athor is absolutely the worst. They are the most among the most blatant in getting people to subcontract their writing of essays and assignments entirely to AI and saying you can get away with it. And maybe you can, because actually AI detectors are terribly unreliable and terribly incompetent. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's one of the ones which I would say is an example of bad stuff. <laughs> and if you're, um, yeah, and actually I, I played a game with Athol. I said, okay, let's use the, let's use the free trial for like 500 words. And I said, can you please write me an essay about the educational consequences of students asking um, for their essays to all be written by services 
that produce results undetectable by AI? And the answer that Athol gave me was, this will be terrible for education. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Where are we? What can we do? And what we're going to do is to move into breakouts. And we'll have breakouts about two sets of questions. The first question will be, how are we and our students already using generative AI tools? The second one will be, what are our limits for the use of generative AI? What advice are we giving to our students and how are they responding to this advice? Um, Irene or Elitza, can you please put the link to the Google's, Google Docs into the chat um, and just mark which one they are? Because what we've got in the Google Docs are suggested questions um, for you to consider. Of course, you can decide which of those you consider or anything else relevant to the topic that you consider. You're so welcome to do that. That would be, that would be fine. Okay, so that's where we are with that one. And um, what we're going to do is to put you into, we have six, we'll have six different breakouts so that there's space for everybody's voice. We'll have three breakouts about the first set of questions. We'll have three breakouts about the second set of questions. And after 15 minutes, what we will do is to come back together and to have a discussion in plenary with reports from the different groups about where you are, with information shared, um, and see if we can come to some kind of consensus, or maybe not. But while you're in the room, can one or two people from your group please document some of your thinking inside the Google Docs? And I will just go, back, go into the Google Docs and make sure that they refer to the right room numbers for you. Okay, so um, I'm going to open the rooms right now. Let's just check we've got, got the answers into the chat. We've got the links into the chat. Thank you very much for putting those links into the chat, Irene. Because once you're in the breakouts, you will see the links from the main room as well, from the main chat. Rooms opening right now. all remain positive okay wow there are a lot of people here and yes, welcome, we are back. welcome everybody for coming back from the breakouts it is not inevitable that people come back from breakouts True. so obviously you must have had some some useful conversation in the breakouts okay so we're back in the plenary now and we've had conversation definitely about the first one which is about our students um, and what they're doing and what we're doing using generative AI. Um, if anyone had a conversation about the second questions about our limits and our advice to our students, can you please just use the reactions, um, raise a hand or thumbs up, whatever it is, because I suspect that people, we only got ready through the first one, that's fine. We can work with that. Okay, so, I'm going to, sh going to share my screen and we can see what kind of feedback there was from the first one. The first one, how are we and our students using generative AI? Sharing the screen now. And we've got um, some answers in the main part. And we've got others from... Um, different rooms as well. That's good. Okay, so um, the group that shared their answers um, in the original text, um, would somebody from that group like to talk with us about your answers, your responses to the questions about how we and our students are using generative AI? Please feel free to... Ah, thank you for raising your hand. Switch on your video, take the mic, please talk to us. All right. Okay, so um, we, we looked uh, mostly at the students, but also a little bit at um, us, 
you know, as 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 the educators, let's call us like that. And so what we said is that the students are very aware of what is available, that they are using the tools. Um, one colleague uh, stated that there were high numbers of disciplinary cases linked to the use of AI tools, which has is in, has an implication on what policies are we using, of course. Um, they're using them uh, mainly for assignments. Um, they are using uh, different ones. Um, I think mostly chat GPT, but we don't really have research on that. Um, and then um, what is, uh, how well are they using it? They're not using it too well. They're using it a lot, I think, um, uh, as a second language users or foreign language users, uh, because they are very um, un uncertain, um, unconfident in what they do, they, they just copy and paste. So there's not a lot of paraphrasing going on. There's not a lot of critical thinking going on. Um, so they feel it's been very useful for them. Um, I think maybe let me stop there. That's on the student side. And then uh, maybe somebody can pick up further on the student side. Or oh, you want me to go? Shall I go into what we are using it for as well, Tony? Okay. Anything else about the student side from your group? No, that's it. Okay. Let's have somebody from the group talking about the us how we and our colleagues are using generative AI. Anyone else from that group? Feel free to switch on your vid, switch on your microphone, talk to us. We want to hear your voice. Frida. Hello. Hi there. Yes. <laughs> how are you? Good. How are you doing? Sorry, I'm uh, I'm using my phone. You did it well. <laughs> so I hope it's yeah. working. Yeah. Okay, it's working. Um, from our side, um, um, we we had also looked at uh, the parts to do with the educators and also to do with the part of the students. But on the part of educators, what we discovered as a group is that yes. Um, I think most of the colleges and universities have now at least uh, been able to introduce uh, chat GPT to their learners. And um, uh, it was discovered that uh, chat GPT by educators, is, it is being used also to help in the development of the learning materials, which has made it easier, obviously, for instructors, because they, there's no way where you can uh, uh, maybe take long in the development of materials because we we have now a chat GPT that can help us uh, in the development of materials. And then it was also highlighted that it is also helping um, uh, in terms of uh, as educators. It was the experiences which were highlighted is that um, some are using it also to help when it comes to. Uh, where they instruct the students to come up with research topics. Um, then they will use also the chat GPT. But however, lecturers, it was uh, discovered, I'm sure uh, the other person can help me, but this was also of interest to me, where she talked of uh, using it uh, to help in a flipped classroom, where the students uh, come up with the research topics. Um, but then at the end of the day, the, the educators will come in to see the authentication of those research topics. So maybe on the part of educators, that's what I will say, also helping in the summarization of the research topics. Uh, unless in the group there's something that I've left out. Um, yeah, in the discussions, those were also other issues that were brought in that it is helping in the also enhancement of the discussions with their students. Yes, thank you so much. Frida, thank you very much. Thank you, Frida. Thank you, Karen. I see um, a question. Are, are we not going beyond ChatGPT? Let's see what some people in the other groups say. There was a room two responses, but that was filled in here. Anyone from room two who wants to talk about their responses about student use and colleague or educator use? Please feel free to just, just take the mic. Yes, Let's thank you. you. Uh, 
Yes. So unfortunately, the composition of the group, I think I was the only educator. So I was um, the only one who was able to give the experience uh -huh. from the student perspective. So, but just in summary, um, uh, we have noted that uh, students are using this to complete the assignments mostly. And um, we have had uh, several cases related to this. Um, and we, just because I come from the computing department, in terms of the level of our awareness, uh, we just like to say that um, I think 100% of them, they are aware of this, because this also is also coming from the field of computing. And therefore, in terms of awareness, because it's within the computing discipline, they are aware. Then other other disciplines, I think, if there's level of awareness, is just through the prevalence in the media and social platforms in terms of the adverse and so forth. In terms of usefulness, we haven't found it to be very useful in terms of how they use it, because most of them, they are not able to explain what they would have provided in the assignment. So it means there is that copy-paste kind of phenomenon, which is also happening as a, as a form of plagiarism. However, in terms of learning, not completing these uh, assessments, yeah, I think it's helpful because we have noticed that for most, it has become more like a default search engine as compared to the traditional, let me just say the traditional Google. <laughs> so it, it has become more like the new way of finding information easier. And also in computing, because they do programming courses and um, AI tools are able to help also with that. So this is also something they are doing. And also in terms of learning, it's helping them because they can practice on their own and they can have some sort of a personalized learning because they can go into a conversation uh, with that particular um, AI interface. So in that regard, it's yeah. helpful. So I don't know if I should just proceed to part two. Um, I think what you're saying is really interesting about part one, because there's something about the very strong awareness of people in a discipline like computer science. Um, and also something that we don't see in the humanities, the use of generative AI to help improve coding. Please go into part two. Okay, thank you. So part two, uh, we, we, of course, we got cut off because of time, but um, we had already had uh, a bit of some uh, responsive from colleagues. Uh, in terms of awareness, I would just say, yeah, most colleagues, I think they are aware because of what was shared in the, in the room and uh, mostly through the media. And uh, they also have found it to be very useful in terms of getting whatever they are, whatever task they are working on, idea generation and so forth. So it actually improves productivity because it makes them start somewhere. And uh, in terms of the tools used, they are using ChatGPT, Gemini. These are, at the moment, the, the tools which are used popular. And also the aspect of saying that it is it's becoming, it's increasingly becoming the new way of searching for information. So I think that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and um, we got in the Google Doc, we also have some responses marked as from room four. Um, so let's hear a little bit about that from somebody who was in that room. Hello? I can see the top of your head. <laughs> Somebody from that room want to talk to us? Otherwise, what have we got here? We've got students using paraphrasing tools like Grammarly and text editors and chat GPT, of course. We have uh, that we don't think they're using them so well. Some students are ignorant, just copy text and paste. This is coming through all the answers, the idea of students subcontracting their writing to say chat GPT most commonly, and then just copying and pasting. And then with the, the colleagues, colleagues are much more aware, getting some training, including on academic dishonesty. Um, and we're using it for idea generation, building on some ideas. And um, 
we may be not using the tools so well ourselves as educators, and we can get lazy. Okay. And there was one more marked room six. Please talk to us if you marked yourself as room six. Love to hear your voice. I'm tired of hearing my own voice. Okay. Apologies, so you... Tony. I was trying to unmute myself. You succeeded. Yeah. Talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, from, uh, I labeled it room six because I wasn't sure. Sure. Don't worry about, about it. About the room. Yeah. So in our room, we had uh, just a few um, comments. And uh, I think uh, one of us indicated that um, at, at, at their own institution, because we have about uh, two people sharing the mic, at their own institution, there is really nothing uh, formal yet regarding the use of uh, AI, uh, generative AI. So no guidance has been provided to students, but they have started picking up you know, some some of these in uh, students' assignments. Uh, at another institution, uh, uh, the plagiarism has been uh, observed to be higher now because of the generative AI. So what the institution, uh, the institution currently uses the, uh, uses Turnitin to detect uh, plagiarism, but it, uh, we have discovered that that is not really working 100%. So what has been, uh, uh, what lecturers have been, or academics have been encouraged to do is to start diversifying the assignments that are being given to students. So if you give students more application questions, for instance, that would take a student to go out to the field, maybe as a, a teacher in training, the student has to go to a school, then you will discourage uh, you know, the use of uh, a, uh, generative AI. Uh, number two is to sensitize students to, you know, what uh, their responses should be, what you expect of them from the uh, from their assignments. So uh, institutions, some institutions are currently doing that. Regarding to academics, uh, some of us have started using AI. Uh, someone said to perfect ideas that maybe he wants to work on. There is uh, also the possibility of getting more relevant references, generating more relevant references to maybe a theme that you are looking at than just, you know, uh, maybe typing something or using any other uh, key, maybe to search for idea, uh, for themes and things like that. I think that is what uh, uh, we just uh, discussed in uh, my room, in our room. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for that. Um, and I think what we're getting across all of these is a picture which basically goes, students are mostly using chat GPT, mostly using it for assignments, generally using it quite badly, often going copy and paste, um, and getting into trouble sometimes. But in many places, the students don't have any guidance at all, and it's free for all, and the AI detectors are so bad that um, often they get away with it anyway, and etc. But the staff, the educators, have got um, often a better understanding, often awareness of a bigger range of tools for a bigger range of purposes, including supporting students involved in research processes, sometimes using the tools in interesting ways themselves, sometimes. But the big issue that seems to be coming up everywhere is the question of policies, but the policy questions need to be driven by our thinking about generative AI. Um, and yeah, in fact, actually, we've got, a, we've got a webinar coming up in Emerge Africa I think on the 9th of this month about policy for generative AI. And we'll tell you about that a bit later. Um, and clearly there are a lot of people here have been thinking a lot about policy. I would like to suggest that we go on to um, the next item on the agenda. And that's a slightly different set of questions. And let me find this. Um, it's like basically the question of where are our limits and red lines 
about student use of generative AI. And I'm copying this into the chat at the moment because what I'm going to ask you to do is to use the reactions to indicate if you agree with any of the following statements. So you know how to find reactions in, um, in Zoom. In Windows, it would be on the bottom taskbar, and you could then decide to raise your hand, do a thumbs up, or whatever, whatever just to indicate that you are there with a particular item. So the first question I have for you about your red lines about student use of generative AI. Would you basically say you are opposed to any student use of generative AI? Please raise your hand using the reactions if you are opposed to any student use of generative AI. So there's nobody here who basically says students, oh, one person who says students should not use AI at all. Oh, wow. Okay. So let's go. Um, you're in a minority, Kaki, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> the next one. Are you opposed to students using generative AI as a substitute for search engines? If that's how you feel, please raise your hand using the reactions. Okay. So nobody has a problem with that. Are you opposed to students getting their essays written by generative AI? If you oppose that, please raise your hand using reactions. Do you oppose the idea of students using generative AI subcontracting their essay writing, assignment writing to generative AI? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of hands coming up here. So I think there's a strong feeling we do not want our students to use generative AI to write their essays. Okay, next one. And you can drop your hands now at the moment. We're going to next next one. If you are opposed to students finding literature or research articles using generative AI, please raise your hand. If you think that's a bad idea, that they should not go to generative AI to find research articles to work with for their assignments. So one person seems to think that's a bad idea. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, Makiba, why do you think it's a bad idea for students to use their, the AI to find research articles for their assignments? Why is it a bad idea? And Kakiso, what do you think? No, I think it's not a bad idea. My hand was raised by me. From the previous one. Okay. Yeah, from the previous one. Okay, Kakiso, talk to us. Please take the mic. I'm sorry. I think it is the previous hand. I'm not a there previous, anymore. It was the previous hand. Okay. So an old hand. Yes. This is what Yes, it's an old hand. Yeah. Okay. The last one. Would you be opposed to students getting feedback on writing from generative AI? Raise your hand if you are opposed to that idea. That they should not get feedback on writing from generative AI. Even things like Quillbot or Grammarly or some of the others that do proofreading and give advice. Okay, so you, nobody here thinks it's a bad idea for students to get advice from a suitable AI about how to improve their writing once they've actually done the writing. And I think that seems to be the important thing. Okay, so... And the next bit, and we're going to be, be with reactions again, but maybe just get a review a little bit here. Um, we have Prof. Cardin Ferreira Mayer's question of how do we intervene? We need to explain how it should be used. And, and Maria, we may demonize it for the wrong reasons. And Dr. Shem, um, Shongwe, should we really try to control it? Can we actually control it? Um, and then, you know, Prof. Karen saying it's oh, research engines, also AI. Um, Retta Biele challenge is about how they use it. Um, Kahiso, the source from AI is not so reliable necessarily um, because AIs hallucinate. I was shocked the first time I tried to ask um, ChatGPT for some advice about some research, just as an experiment. 
And it came back with lots of references. And every single, this, single one of those references at that stage was a completely fake reference. I think it's better now, but it was terrible then. Okay. And <laughs> Prof. Karen, they get advice from us. So where is the difference? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, um, are we always completely reliable? I think that's a question we don't like asking ourselves. Okay, so let's try another one about the advice that we give. What advice do you give to your students? Okay, so again, using reactions. Raise your hand if you give no advice at all about generative AI to your students. Zero advice. If you give zero advice to your students about generative AI, if you're teaching. So everybody gives some advice. That's good. Raise your hand if the advice that you give to your students is don't use it. Don't do this. Don't go there. Nobody tells that to their students. You're a pretty, so, a pretty sane bunch, very sensible bunch. Raise your hand if the advice you give to your students is use this wisely or be careful. Use this wisely or be careful. Okay, some lots of hands going up. Use this wisely or be careful. Use it, but use it wisely. Okay. There seems to be a, a bit of a consensus here among many people. What if the advice that you give to your students? Okay, you can drop your hands now from the previous one. What if the advice that you give to your students is actually, I am going to say you should use generative AI, but only use the tools that I tell you to use. Only use these tools in these ways. I'm telling you what tools to use, okay? You recognize your students have freedom, okay? And then the last one, raise your hand if you are telling the students, be critical of what you are hearing from the AI. Be very critical. Don't regard the AI as the arbiter of truth. This whole thing about information literacy and critical awareness goes way back, way, way back to where people were basically saying, um, okay, I got this from the internet, it must be true. And then we went, okay, so let's figure out what your sources are here, and is it from a reliable source? And nowadays, we're even having to say, how do you know that what you think is a reliable source is not a fake source or manufactured? Exactly. And A. Wentworth says, students could find Gen AI we are not aware of, and so we couldn't learn from them about those tools. And I think that we could learn from them. I think that's important. It's very important. And Prof. Karan is saying we have to be careful about what it means to be critical, what we understand by critical awareness, critical engagement with digital and other information. Okay. So, I think we can move on from here. I am going to share screen again. Let's go and find this. Where are we? Thank you. Okay, so present, present, presentation mode, very good. Okay, so the thing that's important here is that there is some research starting which shows that maybe students are not doing the things that we say they're doing. Maybe students are not actually all out to just copy and paste from AI. And there was some research done with South African students late last year, which came to the conclusion that the students generally were not there in order to subcontract their thinking. They wanted to use the AI to support their work, to support their learning, so that they could actually develop their capacity rather than fake their capacity. And in some cases, they were even using the AI as a bit of a tutor. Very interesting to see that happening as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. 
Next, we have two invitations. And I think we've just about got time for these two invitations before we close. First invitation, on the slide after that, is I am working with Alice Bowers and Bodler and with Professor Mustafa Diak from the Southern University System in the US to develop an online festival of generative AI in African higher education. Okay, please move the cursor off that, thanks. Okay, so we ask, is it the key to transformation or is it just another imported fad that we're wasting our time and resources on? And we're planning for something really, really exciting with, of course, research papers and presentations, but also practitioner presentations and reflections, also um, online workshops, possibly even an online, ha online hackathon, technology demos and chances to play and try things out. And of course, we're going to have an online conference social as well. So if anyone went to previous Emerge Africa conferences, you'll know the kind of style that we try to emulate, where we try to have something which is open and innovative and warm and often also a lot of fun. So please feel free to mail us at info at AIHorizonAfrica.net if you're interested and you want to find out more. And we will also send out information to your network when we have the call for papers and proposals ready, which will happen very soon. Okay, next invitation. The next invitation is that the same group of us are thinking about putting together a proposal for research on the use of generative AI in African higher education across Africa, not just from one country, not just from universe, one university, but across many institutions, across many countries and regions. If you are interested and would like to also make this dream happen, please contact us at the same address, info at AIHorizonAfrica.net. We'd love to hear from you. There are a number of rounds of funding proposals coming up. And if we don't, if we can't get one together for May, then maybe we go for something in June or September, because this is work that requires some sustained effort to pull a consolidated proposal together and to share thinking and have the highest quality of funding proposal because there's a lot of competition out there. Okay. Next. We are reaching the end, dear friends. Maybe it's the beginning of something. Um, and we're going to ask you for some feedback. And a system called Idea Board, Idea Boards, um, on the topics of what you what you liked, what you learned, a highlight, and a question you carry with you after this. And all you do is you put uh, you press the plus sign and it opens up a little place where you can put your input into the system. And um, Rylitsa has put the link for the idea board into the chat. You can click on that and come through. Um, Irene is going to open the screen for the idea board. So we'll be sharing that screen. And then you can come in and just put in your feedback. And yes, indeed, show us how, how it's done. Thank you. What I liked. What did you like? Was there something you liked? I hope there's something you liked. Oh, gosh. You liked that. The participation. Ha. Huh. Okay, so that's one. The interactivity. So things are coming through. So please come in and give us your feedback. It's very simple, very easy. You can vote things up if you want as well. You have chances to do that. Just follow the link that's in the chat and come through to the idea board. Ah. Okay, so things are coming through here. You can please close that. Um, Irene, close that little box because we want to see the update on your screen. And maybe you can do a refresh, a share and refresh of the idea board screen. Otherwise, I can do that. 
I'm very happy to do that. Here we go. Sharing screen idea, board screen one. Here we go. Share. Okay, so lots of things starting to come through. So what people liked, interactivity, breakout participation, ideas of implementing, collaboration, sharing, aha, uh -huh, conversation that's coming through. We're getting learning. We need to work on policies. AI is not a bad thing. We all share the same challenges. We must ask practical assignments. This is it. We must ask assignments with questions that are so specific that it will be very difficult to get an answer from AI unless somebody was an extremely good prompt engineer. And if they're that good as a prompt engineer, they'd probably want to write the essay themselves anyway. So learning, some learning coming through here. Highlights, similar thoughts, policy, method of the webinar, learning about other AIs, not just chat GPT. Yeah, you, are you bored with chat GPT, some people? Maybe. Let's get a bit more feedback in here. Please just put in some of your feedback. Um, give you another minute or two for that. And then we will bring this to a close, dear colleagues. Certainly policy is still coming through. Ah, questions. How can we keep with the constant transformation of the field? Is AI something? Okay. Future, not a threat. How do we help students more? How are our institutions reimagining their structure and organization? Are least developed countries prepared to counter the negative aspect of AI? Is AI <laughs> really the way? Or is it just going to turn people into robots? That would be horrible. How reliable is it? How to best use in teaching learning? You've got good questions there. You have, you have the best questions. Right, good. Fields, could we collaborate to come up with some ideas about shared or joint policy? I think most of the institutions that are, have been investing in this space are developing policy documents and advice documents. I know, for example, I would guess University of Eswatini have got those. I would guess that probably um, Botswana Open University has that as well. UCT, University of Cape Town has that. Many of the other places have those documents as well. But we're all developing them ourselves in isolation, maybe some conversation, but maybe we can use something like AI Horizon Africa, the festival, to have joint policy conversations as well. Hmm. And how can institutions work together? That's coming through as well. So thank you very much, colleagues. Feel free to continue adding to this idea board as well. I think we're going to need to probably move on a just a little bit. Okay. What I will tell you next with a big screen, is that we have an event, Emerge Africa event, coming up on the 9th of April, um, which focuses on developing policies for AI courses and envisioning AI ethics. It's with an um, esteemed colleague called Suher Klef um, from um, Anaja University in um, Palestine who will be sharing his thinking with us. He had a very successful seminar um, a little while back with our colleagues in the Arabic speaking part of the network. And now he's bringing it to the English speaking part of the network as well. You can come to emergeafrica.net. It's at the top of that web page, and you can find a way to then click through to the Zoom sign up if you want to join us for that. And then next, I want to say thank you to everybody. I want to say thank you to um, Professor Mabaledi and the colleagues from the SADC Center for Distance Education. I want to say thank you to everybody here who joined us and invested your own time to be here today. I want to say thank you to my um, dear colleagues from the Emerge Africa team, Irene Maweo, Ralitza Debra, and Gabriel Koneyuma as well. Um, for 
their role in this event also. And at this point, I think what I just need to do is to stop sharing um, and to hand back to the colleagues from the SAD C Center for Distance Education, because time is fleeting. Wow. That's all I can say from the SADC Center for Distance Education. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much to you, Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I can see though, I, I, I see beyond the, 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 the machines that we're using that you, 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 you are really impressed. You are such a great audience. This was quite an interactive workshop that allowed, you know, for so much um engagement and i just want to say thank you to all of you i'm just again by virtue of the chair sitting that i'm sitting on being the chairperson for the for the session i'm just going to allow you to unmute your microphone colleagues and give yourselves a big round of applause you have been ama an amazing audience and for that ladies and gentlemen i want to say thank you so much so just unmute your microphones and give yourselves a big round of applause. Mm, everybody. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm just going to close them one by one because I can see who's my phone. Is. Yeah, now that. <laughs> thank you so much, colleagues. And thank you again, Tony, and your Image Africa team. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been amazing. You know, Tony and, and his colleagues from the Image Africa has really made the use of chat GPT and of course other technology tools sound so easy to use for most of us. And, and for that 20 and team, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you so much. We have exposed us to some of the things that we never really thought could, could be so easy to use, so easy to interact with. And the engagement has been top class. That in itself shows that um this has been you know, really well thought. And um, I'm just going to go back to our program and before inviting a, a colleague to give the thanks, vote of thanks and invite you to the next webinar. Um, I just have a few announcements from the colleagues in the region here. Colleagues, you are all invited by Botswana Open University to attend, to participate at the first inaugural International Odell Conference. This is slated for 8th to 10th May. And I'm happy to announce that the call for papers is still open until April 15th. Bo invites you, ladies and gentlemen, to participate in their very first International Odell Conference scheduled for 8th to, 8th to 10th May 2024. And call for papers is open until April 15th. We also have the DIASA 2024 conference colleagues, and this time it's Malawi hosting. Lilongwe is calling colleagues. So the call for abstracts is open. The second call will be out the next week, but um, just know that save the date that DIASA 2024 conference will be held in Malawi September 4th to 6th, and call for abstracts is open. There is also the fifth Continental African Curriculum Association Conference in Namibia. This will be held from the 16th to the 19th of September. The fifth Continental African Curriculum Association Conference in Namibia, ladies and gentlemen, you are all invited and it will be held from the 16th to the 19th September 2024. The last um, announcement we have is the sixth Southern African Quality Assurance Network Conference. The venue is, is the Radisson Blue Hotel in Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, sixth Southern Africa Quality Assurance Network Conference will be held in Zambia at the Radisson Blue Hotel from the 25th to the 27th, September 2024. Zambia Radisson Blue Hotel, 25th to 27th. 2024. And colleagues, before I hand over to Dr. Tladi to do the vote of thanks for us, 
let me really from the bottom of my heart appreciate all of you who had made time for this webinar seminar there are regulars that i will not i will never ever get tired from mentioning you see we have an amazing support from the distance education association of southern africa and the exco here is in present it's, it's present um i know that they're attending in the you know by virtue of being from ODL institutions or institutions of higher learning, um, the likes of Dr. Ruth Alugu, the likes of Doc Professor Sindile Ngubani, these are regulars at this conversation seminar, and I wish to uh, acknowledge your presence, colleagues. I also wish, ladies and gentlemen, in a very special way to acknowledge the presence of Professor Komozo Mwahi, who is the Vice Chancellor of Botswana Open University. She she is here. I'm not sure if she's she she may be exited because um some of the colleagues have other other you know assignments to attend to. Professor Mwahi is one of the regulars um, at this meeting. But again, we have an amazing representation from our region, the Southern African Bloc and beyond. I see other than countries that um, Dr. Tadi will mention, we do have colleagues from Ghana here. We do have, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues from Kenya. And these are, again, regular mm -hmm. attendants of the conversation conversation seminar series. And it, it, it shows that it's, it's, it's doing wonders as we tend to go beyond the boundaries of the Republic of Botswana, as well as beyond um, the Southern Africa as a regional bloc. Another regular, ladies and gentlemen, at this meeting, the webinar seminar series, and sometimes she even asks, maybe she wants us to have two webinars in a month, because these are monthly, but sometimes even the month is gone. She asks, when is the webinar series? Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lesedili said that is the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Prep Services at the Botswana Open University. We acknowledge you and we thank you for your continued support, Dr. Lesedili. And I have noted that this time around, various member states um, are represented not only by institutional heads, not only by, you know, the practitioners, but by ministries. We, I see a lot of colleagues, you know, coming in to say, I'm from the Ministry of Ed Education and Training from Lesotho. And I'm happy to say that we have a colleague, we had a colleague from Mauritius, I think she, she just stepped out to attend to something else. And she was also attending as a member of the ADEF Steering Committee Forum. And she made it clear to me, to clear to me on the side that she has heard about this seminar series from some colleague and she just wanted to be a part of it today. And she's not disappointed. So she said, I should convey this message to you, colleagues from Image Africa, that Helene Maria said she is so impressed. She's happy to have been in attendance. I can say a lot about the, this webinar series because, you know, it's, it's, it's very exciting to be with people of, of, of your caliber. And at this point in time, I'm just going to invite a red lady who is standing in for Ms. Tumelezo to give us the vote of thanks and invitation to the next session. Colleagues, next session, we want to see you again um, at this at this webinar that Dr. Tladi will be inviting you to. Over to you, Dr. T, do the vote of thanks, as well as the honor to do the invitation to the next session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, you have really done my job very, very easy because you have touched on uh, issues that uh, would have uh, needed me to touch on. But I, I have been, ladies and gentlemen, I have been uh, honored this morning, yeah, almost afternoon. <laughs> Uh, to to give you a, a vote of thanks and then really for me it it is uh, that uh, giving a, a vote of thanks and I would very much uh, maybe want to start by acknowledging uh, and appreciating the presence of uh, my uh, VC Professor uh, Mwahi uh, who. Uh, 
is among us in, in this virtual uh, meeting today and uh, also uh, appreciate the, the, the e Image Africa team for a very well organized and delivered uh, seminar. Uh, the first that I have attended uh, in this uh, conversation a seminar series that has been so uh, participatory and uh, uh, involving uh, to the to the participants, I uh, it was a very good seminar indeed, uh, colleagues, and I believe we have we have learned a lot from it. And I, I let me also appreciate and recognize the presence of uh, the countries that uh, attended the, the the conversation seminar. Among them. Obviously, uh, Botswana being the host country, uh, and then we have uh, other uh, international and national, I mean, uh, regional uh, countries, Zambia, Lesotho, Ghana, as, as uh, Dr. Seletso has already said, we have South Africa, uh, and I also in South Africa, from South Africa, I need to also, you know, recognize the, the other executive members, uh, Professor Ngubani and Dr. Aluko. And uh, as has been said, we also had uh, Haline Marianne from uh, Mauritius. We have uh, UK represented uh, through Oxford University, Eswatini, Mozambique, Namibia, Kenya, uh, and uh, others that I might have not necessarily been able to, to, to pick uh, from um, uh, the members as they, they introduced themselves. You are all you are thanked, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance. We had a total of 79 uh, members in attendance uh, at this uh, seminar today. And I think uh, we are looking forward to a repeat of, of, of uh, the, this session, maybe in terms of numbers of attendance, uh, uh, and even more in, in the next uh, conversation series that uh, uh, I shall be, uh, you know, inviting you to. During this session, we, we learned about uh, artificial, generative artificial intelligence. We, we, were, we were given an opportunity through the breakout sessions to, you know, deliberate on a number of uh, issues affecting our hopes and fears and what our students are using AI for and how uh, we as uh, as academics are using it. Uh, and uh, I think the exercise wa was very insightful. It was very uh, informative. And I believe we are carrying very useful and valuable knowledge and information uh, from this session that we will be able to use uh, effectively in in our our facilitation uh, of teaching and learning in our various uh, institutions of of learning and uh, with that ladies and gentlemen uh, I wish to to thank you for your patience for your uh, participation, uh, active participation during the session, and uh, uh, wish you well uh, for the rest of the of the day. Now, to close, really, it is just to, by way of invitation to all of you, to the next conversation uh, seminar, uh, which will be held on the twenty fifth of uh, April. 2024. Uh, the, the, remember that the, the session today was supposed to be 
uh, held in March. So it's not like there are two seminars uh, in April. But uh, the next one is actually the one that is scheduled for, for April the 25th, uh, to which you are all uh, invited. And this will be fa facilitated by the PCF 11 organizing committee. And uh, the PCF 11, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just by way of uh, announcement and uh, reminder to those who are in the know, is going to be held in Botswana this uh, uh, coming year, 2025. Uh, and it is going to be hosted by Botswana Open University in partnership or in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Skills Development. And uh, we are also looking forward to uh, seeing you um, in person participating at uh, this, this forum. Uh, with those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, thank you all and uh, wish you a, a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tladi, and thank you so much, other colleagues, for, for being such, for your great audienceship. Like I say, I never get tired from praising those that do good. And um, I want to thank you, all the people, again, who participated in today's program, the Image Africa team, you, you were amazing. Dr. Frisin Kaniwa and Dr. Lokopanyi Tladi, thank you so much for making this possible and of course those that have been working behind the scenes CTELT, department of CTELT and sadek cde team at the at uh, Botswana open university thank you so much